Well, he can probably list every country in, in the world today. Woo! How many countries do I think have nuclear weapons? List them. China. I don't think I signed up for this. <laughs> Russia. Uh, UK, maybe? America, I'm guessing. America. Oh, oh, us. Oh, well, I, that was a given. France. Germany. Australia. Canada? I don't think Canada. No? Japan. Japan. Uh, no, not Japan. There's more. I know there's more. Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia. Uh, All other countries that's just not telling us. They have them. Afghanistan? Uh, <laughs> North Korea? North Korea? Wait, do they? Okay, North, North Korea. Korea. I just wrote a lot. I just wrote Who knows? Who knows exactly? I don't know. I'm out. Oh, sure. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. After the United States detonated the first atomic bomb in the New Mexico desert, nuclear technology began to spread. And other countries began to acquire their own nuclear bombs. Great credit is due for this mighty British achievement. For it seems that by the possession of such deadly weapons, peace can be maintained in this troubled world. At Ragan, deep in the Sahara, France goes forward with the detonation of her first atomic bomb. The explosion carries France a step further towards General de Gaulle's dream of national glory restored. This is a gigantic success of Mao Zedong's thought. Our nation's first nuclear test surpasses the levels of the first nuclear tests of the United States, Britain, and France. Their criminal attempts to block and prevent our nation's people from grasping nuclear weapons have been thoroughly smashed. Pakistan, which has often been a war with India, hinted it now might have to join the once select nuclear community in self-defense. Warned membership of the nuclear club will not stop at six. One prime minister of Pakistan said that Pakistan would build a nuclear weapon even if it meant that the people had to eat grass. We will make the bomb even if we have to eat grass. In Karachi, they poured into the streets, pulling a symbol of the power they're celebrating. The bomb has become a huge source of national pride. Total jubilation in the streets of Pakistan. The first time we've achieved something which places us in the ranks of very, very few countries of the world. We were proud of our scientists. We were proud of our capabilities. We were proud of our strength. People thought that now let India do anything to Pakistan. Let's see what they do. I had North Korean officials say to me the lesson they took away from the toppling of Saddam Hussein was that Saddam was ousted because he didn't have a bomb. They were not going to let the same thing happen to Kim Jong-il. Therefore, they needed to have a bomb. North Korea is scared of disappearing into what the communists used to call the dustbin of history, like all their other communist friends. And they see nukes as the one thing that makes them a country that is taken seriously by the United States and the other big players in the neighborhood.
every country has enemies. Every country can use self-defense as a rationale for acquiring nuclear weapons. But if every country does so, it is a much more dangerous world. When you see something that is technically sweet, you do it. That is the way it was with the atomic bomb. The father of the atomic bomb, Robert Oppenheimer, gave some frank answers to important questions in 1947. I have been asked whether, in the years to come, it will be possible to kill 40 million American people in the 20 largest American towns by the use of atomic bombs in a single night. I am afraid that the answer to that question is yes. I have been asked whether there is hope for the nation's security in keeping secret some of the knowledge in, which has gone into the making of the bombs. I am afraid there is no such hope. A nuclear weapon, in a sense, is the, the most simple um, configuration of nuclear material that you can imagine. You just bring together a certain quantity of, of fissile material, uh, highly enriched uranium or plutonium, and if you do it right, it will explode. <laughs> 